Hi everyone, this is Tuplex, welcome back. Today we're gonna make military science packs. Um, and it's not because I really want the military science packs so much as it is because I want the ammo and the grenades. And if we're gonna set up something to make ammo and grenades, we might as well just take it all the way and make the science packs too. So um, I'll put it over here next to our green circuits. So let's make our six tiles of space here again, just to give ourselves a little bit of room in between each little section of production. Um, the reason I do that is just because later on in the game there might be, you know, there might be a situation where we need to run some belts down there or put robo ports or more radar or who knows. I, I just like to leave a little bit of room in between each section. Okay, so, um, yeah, so let's look at the recipe. So, uh, one thing to note is that each cycle here will give two military science packs. So if you notice these other two, it just says one science pack, logistic science pack, and then here it's two times military science pack. So for each of those ingredients, you're going to get two of them. Okay. And it has a 10 second crafting time. So if we're going to stick with our theme of one per second out of a blue machine, uh, we're going to need five machines since we're going to get two each time. Okay. So we can just lay those out there like that. All right. Now these need three ingredients. Uh, so we need piercing round magazines, we need grenades, and we need walls. So on the piercing rounds, um, again, since we have five of these, um, and we're making two at a time, uh, well, let's look at it this way. Since we make two every 10 seconds times five, that's 10 per second, so we have to make one per second, right? No. We're going to get 10 per 10 seconds military science packs, but we only need half as many ingredients. So for the piercing rounds and grenades, we need one every two seconds. And for the wall, we need one per second. Okay. And we can, whoops, let me switch my, my bars. And we can set these up with, with three ingredients you can feed with two belts. And actually, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave two tiles to the first belt. And then I'll put my, my next two belts. The reason I like to do that is because it makes it really easy to set up inserters to feed it. And then we just have yellow inserters on the output. Okay, and this is where the science packs will come out. Now in this case, we need to get these science packs over to the labs. Um, but I know that I'm gonna be expanding my green circuits more to the north. So I don't wanna send the belt this way because then it's gonna get in the way. So let's do this. I'll bring it down and then we'll run it across this way. See, this is why it's good to leave room. And then we can come up here. Over there. And run the belt up there. Let me craft some more of those red inserters. set up the uh, second row red inserters like that to pull from that belt. Okay, so we got that done. Now we just have to make all the ingredients. Uh, let's do this. There we go. And we'll throw in a couple of lights. Um, yeah, let's put one there, one there. 
Okay, so now we just have to get our ingredients, our three ingredients onto these belts. So the walls are real easy. Those, they take stone bricks and it's a half a second crafting time. And since I need one a second, that means I can have a single machine making stone bricks. Um, and we can, we can decide which of the belts we want this to go on. Um, here, actually what I'd like to do, yeah, I'm going to move this over one more because I would like to accumulate some of those in a chest because we're going to need lots of walls at some point anyway. Okay, and then we can just feed that with the stone bricks from the bus, which we have down here. Okay, so now we need to get the bricks from this bottom belt up there. So there's a couple ways that you can do that. Uh, the way that I like to do it is to put an underground there, and then we can put our splitter right there. And I think I might actually need I might need more than one inserter for this. Yep. Okay, so that'll be more than fast enough to keep those fed. And then uh, whatever extra it makes, we'll just start filling up this chest with stone walls. and we can end these belts right there. Okay. So let's make the ammo next. Actually, you know what? Let me, um, let me do this. I'll just move that inserter and that way they'll, they'll go on the near side of this belt. walls go. There they are. And I'm going to feed this some of the stone brick I have since I have a lot of extra. Okay. Uh, no. You know what? I changed my mind. Okay. Yeah. I changed my mind because whatever else we make, I'm going to have to load into this belt down here near the bottom. Um, because if I load it, you know, if I have some more machines and I load it here, then these two machines are not going to get any. So everything has to load in from the bottom or from the top and go down. Okay. So let's do the, let's do the ammo next that takes copper steel and regular firearm magazines. Okay, so copper and steel we already have on belts. That's no problem. Um, now this has a crafting time of four seconds. So I would need two machines to make one every two seconds. Um, but I want to make extra for my own use. So I'm going to double that. Okay, and the firearm magazine takes one second. So one firearm magazine machine can feed, let's see, that makes one a second. We need one every four seconds. So one firearm magazine machine can feed four piercing round magazine machines. Okay. Oh, I need to make more assembly machines. 
Let me grab some green circuits. I'll just run along the belt holding down the F key. And then I need more gears. Just to speed up my hand crafting times. And then I'm going to turn off this little ammo factory. We're not going to need that anymore since we're going to be upgrading. Do I have any wood? Yeah, let's put... Uh, Let's put some more wood in there. And let's throw some copper in there so we make more power poles. Okie doke. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll put here one machine making firearm magazines. And we can have those go onto a belt there and these are about one per second so a yellow inserter will be fast enough but I think I'm gonna need probably two blue inserters to feed the iron plates okay so we need iron plate right there now in this case I'll have to again kind of mess with my Typical spacing, just because that's all that we have room for. There we go. Oh, crud. <laughs> that's steel. I don't want steel, I want iron. Well, I do need steel, but not right here. My bad. Okay, so iron, let's make some more of those, and again we put some there, I'll put priority like so, there we go. going to turn this belt the other way. Okay, and then I'm going to have one, two, three, four, making piercing rounds. And those are going to pick up that yellow ammo. Okay, and then we need steel and copper. And let's see, we need five copper per second. Since a yellow belt will carry 7.5 per second on each side of the belt, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine copper and steel on a single belt and run it up here. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's get the copper belt extended here. Okay. So if we're going to bring that up right there, actually I might need to give ourselves a little more room. Okay, let's put that there. And then I'm going to do an underground belt. I really need those cliff explosives soon. Okay, and then steel will come there, and then we point it there, we stick a belt in the middle, there, and now we got copper on one side and steel on the other side. Perfect. And I'll do fast inserters on this side since we have a lot of ingredients that we need to move. feed those onto that belt with red inserters 
And now the only thing that we're missing are grenades. Okay, so grenades. Those take eight seconds each. So I need four machines making grenades, plus some extra for myself. Right, the four machines is going to make one every two seconds for the science packs, and then we'll make, let's say, another two. So let's do six machines. And those only need iron and coal. All right. I've already got iron here. But I do have plenty of space above here, so I think I'll just, I'll make it up here. Okay, so this will be the grenade factory. And that'll output onto that belt. Like so. All right, let's throw in some more lights. Okay, and then where do we want to bring up the iron? I guess we can bring up the iron and the coal here. So let's see, I've got six machines. Eight second crafting time. Each one needs 10 coal. So that's one and a half seconds each. 10 coal in one and a half seconds. I think that, I think, I think half a belt of coal is going to be good too, if my math is not off. So let's do, let's do a combined belt of iron and coal. Okay, we just have to put coal on the bus, and I'll do that next to the stone bricks. Since we have coal here, okay, but once again, I'm going to set the priority to the power plant, and I need more belts. All right, let's grab those power poles, and our queue is finished. Uh, let's see. Well, we're, we only have a limited amount that we can do. Let's do mining productivity first. And then I'll do the rest of those. Mining productivity is good to have. Probably need to put more mining drills on the coal since I'm starting to use more and more of it. Okay. Actually, I might not. I might not need to take it much farther than that. Okay. So this will be shared between iron and coal. So let's make a few spaces here. We'll put that one there, and then we can bring coal up this way. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Let's leave that there. Then I'll go up like that. There we go. I think it's kind of fun to figure out how to get all these belts routed. All right. And 
and I'll use fast inserters here since we need to move 15 items. Let's see, we need to move 15 items every eight seconds. So um, I think a single fast inserter should be enough. And you'll notice the normal behavior in the game is that the inserters will always load twice what you need for a single cycle. So that's why it's loading 20 and 10. So usually when you first start up, your belts will drain a lot faster than they normally will once, once everything is underway. Okay, and that looks good. And that's the last thing we needed for the science packs. What is this? Oh, <laughs> I accidentally changed the recipe. All right, so we're done there, sort of. Now the last thing I wanna do is I wanna set up some collection for the grenades and um, and piercing rounds that I'm not using. Okay, so I'm gonna set up two chests. Uh, let's see. One for each. Okay, and I'll limit them both to, I don't know, let's say four stacks. And in this case, I'm gonna make two filter inserters. Filter inserters behave like they they run at the same speed as the fast inserters, as the blue ones, but you can tell it specifically what to pick up. So in this case, I want one to pick up the piercing rounds, and I want the other one to pick up the grenades. And that way they'll both go into their own individual boxes. Okay, and then I'm gonna take all this yellow ammo that I have, and I'm going to start dumping it out, including the ammo that's in my gun presently. All right, and I have a little extra. So we can put a chest there and throw in the extra. And yeah, and that's going on the other side of the belt, but that's okay because there's nothing on, else on this belt except for the except for the yellow ammo. And then I'll grab the red stuff and start collecting that. So whatever doesn't get pulled to make science packs will continue down the belt and it'll come here where it can get put into these chests for me to grab. All right, so now I have grenades. Here, let's clear that. We want that to be the red ammo. And we can just stop by and refill every once in a while. Okay, looks good. Now let me show you how you get rid of trees quickly. See, that was one shot, and you can see it didn't quite destroy the trees. Some of them still have a little bit of health. Um, but again, you don't get any wood from doing that. You just make the trees go away. So if you need wood, you still have to chop it manually or remove them with construction bots, which you'll see later on in the series. <laughs> I still don't like that sound. It's weird. Okay. And then we can start queuing up some military science, such as flamethrowers. That's a pretty good one to get. Landmines. Um, we might as well get it. I don't often use it, but why not? We'll add those to the queue. Okay. So, um, the next thing I would do at this phase is start making them all, but I will tell you that I would like to very quickly have some 
cliff explosives. So I think instead I'm going to set up some temporary oil processing so that I can get cliff explosives as soon as possible. Okay. So I'm going to make myself a couple of pump jacks. I'll make a couple of refineries. Uh, let's make a storage tank and let's make two or three chemical plants and let's look and see where the oil is and it's way over here next to a biter nest so we're gonna have to clear out that biter nest oh and I'm also gonna need a lot of pipes so let's start making pipes I'm going to take this apart now. I'm going to take this apart too. I don't need this anymore since we're already making green circuits in mass quantities. Um, I really don't need this anymore either, to be honest. All right. So I'm going to set up a couple machines here. And we'll set these to make straight pipes and we'll set this one to make pipe to ground I'll put one chest there one chest there there we go pipe to ground uses pipes as an ingredient and lots of them so that's why I have a dedicated one for that um, straight pipes it's good to have a lot of them the underground pipes you can get away with fewer so we'll start to accumulate some and uh, while we're working on that we'll go we'll go and take out that nest um, and actually let's also let's make some engines so that we can craft a car okay so I want eight engine units so to make sure I don't make any more than eight, I'll just drop in eight pieces of steel. Like that. And then we'll throw in some gears and we'll throw in some pipe. And we'll wait for that to make eight engine units and then I can make a car and that'll make the trip out there a little bit quicker as long as there aren't too many trees. If there's a lot of trees, sometimes it's faster just to walk. Okay, we'll grab some more ammo. I actually don't have a whole lot of ammo here right now. Um, so I think I'll take some more yellow ammo as backup. Right, so for the explosives, I need, uh, let's see, where are they? I need coal and sulfur, and then the cliff explosives need grenades and empty barrels on top of that. Okay, I've got some coal. Let's grab some more. What I'm thinking is I'll just go out there. I'll just set up the pump jacks and then I'll bring, I'll just bring pipes down over here somewhere. I mean, we're going to need pipes of oil coming back to the base anyway. Um, what's kind of a pain is getting power out there. So let's start handcrafting a bunch of these big power poles. Okay, and then we can make the car. Let's grab more pipe. Here. Speed this up a little bit.
Okay, and we'll, while we're waiting for the car to get made, I'll just start running out there. All right. So let's just put the first large power pole right there. Actually, let's put it right there. Connect that to the grid. And then I'll just go up one or two lengths. So um, it goes without saying, I think that the large power pole is good for distributing power over long distances. It's not good for powering buildings because the area of effect is so small, but the distance between power poles is much farther. So, so this is good for power distribution more than it is for powering buildings. Okay, and then I'll cut right here. Yeah, and that'll get us pretty close to where we need to be. And then we'll just run the pipes back along this same, along the power line. I try to keep these lined up as best I can. It looks a lot better on the map that way. Okay, yeah, and then we can go north. All right. Now let's set up a couple turrets. So you can see the piercing rounds are much more powerful. fish. Great. Uh, looks like they destroyed a couple of my turrets. Okay, so to start with, two pump jacks will be enough. And do I want to put that into a tank? Yeah, why not? So we'll put down a tank. We'll feed these both into that. Whoops. Okay. Well, this is new. Fluid system contents and storage tank contents. I guess fluid system counts the pipes as well. That's interesting. Okay. Good. And then I will leave one turret. I'll just give it the 53 rounds and then I'll use all these bricks I have to make some stone wall. Probably should have just grabbed a couple stacks and I'll wall this in just to keep the biters away from it. This won't make a whole lot of pollution, I don't think. So hopefully, hopefully the biters will leave it alone for the most part, but you never know. I'm sure they'll find it eventually. And then I'll also craft a radar, and I'll stick a radar in here so that we have visibility of what's going on here. Uh, where did it go? There it is. Yeah, we'll throw in a light too. There. And then this will also start scanning the area around here, which will hopefully reveal more juicy ore patches. Okay, so now we need to start running our pipeline. 
You need a straight pipe for the corners. And biters, for the most part, not always, but usually they kind of ignore pipes and power poles and train tracks. Unless they get really angry sometimes, like if you, if you attack them and then you leave the area and there's, if there are power poles and stuff around, they will start to attack those. But most of the time they'll, they'll leave them alone because they don't generate pollution or anything like that. So they're not, uh, they're not a prime target for the for the bugs. I guess we didn't get a chance to use our car, did we? Um, and when, when running a pipeline, I feel like it's easier to do on foot, so we'll use the car later on. Okay, and it looks like I'm probably going to run out of undergrounds, so I'll just start handcrafting some more. Right, these use 10 pipes each for each pair and 5 iron, so you will burn through pipes and iron really fast when you're making these things. Let's use our grenades. Make sure you don't hit your power poles with it. Because the grenades will destroy your stuff as well as anything else <laughs> that's in the zone. Whoops. That pole was in the way. Okay. All right. So let's just set up. Let's just set up right here. So I'm going to put in two oil refineries, and I'll leave one space in between them to power them up. Uh, we select the recipe, which we only have one choice. That's basic oil processing. Let's craft some more pipe. And I'm going to make another storage tank. Okay, and let me just run that petroleum oil into there. And it's, or the crude oil, and it'll start to make petroleum. So we can then connect those outputs. And start collecting that into a tank. Like so. Okay, and then it'll slowly start to fill up. All right, and now we need to make sulfur, right? Where were the explosives? Sulfur, okay. So let's make a chemical plant, and I'll just attach that directly to the tank. Set it to make sulfur. Okay, no, I won't attach it directly to the tank. What if I put it there? Yeah, perfect. It needs water too. So let's make an offshore pump and let's feed it some water, which we just happen to have handy over here. Okay. Now it's making sulfur. All right, and then that goes into another chemical plant. Okay, let's put the pipe there. And that way we can run that pipe down that way. Put an inserter. That'll pick up our explosives. We can 
put that there. Press R to change direction. And now we have a supply of coal. Actually, let's bring it over here since we have power there. Yeah, we need one coal every four seconds. Actually, we need one sulfur every four seconds too, so yellow inserters are more than good enough. All right, and then for the cliff explosives, we need grenades and empty barrels. Okay. So I'll put that one there. Oh, I guess those are made in a regular assembler machine. Okay. All right, so we'll put in a chest. I'll throw in my grenades. And then we need some empty barrels. Um, empty barrels you just make from one steel plate each. So we'll just make some of those and throw them in the same chest along with the grenades. And that'll give us cliff explosives. Quick and dirty. Later on we'll set up something a little more a little more elaborate. In fact, we could we can make the steel barrels like this. So that later on we can just bring grenades and a stack of steel and let it run for a while. In fact, let's go down and get some more steel and grenades. Okay, that's a lot of grenades. I'll just pick up some steel from the belt. Okay. I'm going to put my yellow ammo back over here. Is this keeping up? This one is not running. Did I miscalculate something? I get one per second. These need one every four seconds. So one into four should work. Hmm. Oh, maybe it was, I think maybe it was just starved of, well, I don't know. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But I'm pretty sure I had the right ratio there. There. And we'll give it another stack of grenades. Okay. So let's see what these cliff explosives can do. I'm not sure exactly how much cliff is going to get removed with each one of these things. I think it's probably going to be disappointing. Oh, that's actually not bad. It takes out quite a bit of it, doesn't it? Wonderful. Oh, okay. Yeah, that does take out quite a bit. Great. So that gives us a lot more room already. And then I'll clear out all the rest of those as well. So that we can continue building off in this direction. Okay, landmines are done. Uh, we've got some more stuff that's unlocked. Um, we researched stack inserters not too long ago. That allows us to make the stack inserter, which uh, picks up... Well, once we have all the bonuses, it can pick up, I think, 13 items at a time. They're kind of expensive to make those, you can see. It takes a fast inserter, plus a red circuit, plus 15 more green circuits, plus 15 gears. Um, but it also gives us access to these inserter capacity bonuses. So capacity bonus one increases the stack inserter capacity by one. All right, we'll start that. 
Stack Inserter 2 is what I'm really interested in because that's going to add one to the stack size of all the other inserters so that our yellow, red, and blue inserters will be able to pick up two at a time. So I'm going to queue that up so we can get that done quickly. And then we'll do some of these other ones. Oh, and let's do explosives too so that we can one-shot trees. Okay, and then um, I will place a couple of turrets up here to protect all this business from the aliens. Um, I won't bother walling it in just yet. But now we can look over here and we can see what's going on here since we left a radar. That all looks fine. And again, I don't think we can check it. That's pollution. Well, yeah, it's starting to make a decent amount of pollution, actually. So that might start getting attacked sooner rather than later. We'll have to keep an eye on it. But anyway, I think we're doing all right. Okay, well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks a lot for watching uh, once again. Uh, in the next episode, I believe we will start to build a mall over here or supply factory, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, we're going to start, we're going to set up an area that's going to be building belts, inserters, fact, or assembly machines, um, you know, all the stuff we need to continue building the rest of the factory. Turrets, that sort of stuff. All right, so until then, have a great day.